When I'm daydreaming, what goes on in my head is very particular. I ask myself lots of questions like, why is the number 13 unlucky? Why do we blow out candles on our birthday? Why do I ask myself so many questions? You know what? I need to find the answer to these questions. Why do we call it the Stockholm Syndrome? The Stockholm Syndrome is a condition in which a hostage or a person victim of a crime will develop feelings of empathy and a sort of bond towards their captor or towards the person committing the crime. In other words, instead of developing feelings of hatred and anger, the victim will develop feelings of sympathy towards their captor. Now, the concept of the Stockholm Syndrome was developed some 40 years ago in a city called um, Stockholm, that's right. Let me give you some context. Summer 1973. This guy, Jan Erik Olsen, has just come out of prison and he thinks to himself the following. Ah, the sweet smell of freedom. What's the first thing I'm gonna do? Rob a bank. And that is exactly what he does. He decides to go to one of the biggest banks in Stockholm, Credit Banken, and just rob it. Now he doesn't go alone, he does bring a friend with him because, you know, robbing a bank alone, mm -mm. Robbing a bank with a friend, yeah, that's what we're talking about. Problem is, it doesn't exactly go as planned. They realize that the police is on their way and that they won't have time to rob the bank. So, you know, they do the rational thing to do when the police is coming and uh, they take four hostages. Three women and a man. Now this is where it gets quite interesting. The hostages start to develop feelings of empathy towards their captors. In fact, once they were released, the hostages refused to testify against either captor in court. Some hostages even went to visit Jan Erik Olsen in prison. Following these events, that's what the psychiatrists called the Stockholm Syndrome, and it's come up in other cases, such as the case of Natasha Kampuch. But how can we explain this syndrome? Well, in reality, it is a simple survival mechanism. What will happen is that victims will unconsciously identify to their captors to cope with fear and anxiety. Because once they identify to the abuser, they can justify the actions of the abuser and therefore their suffering lessens. You see what I'm saying? So the Stockholm Syndrome is not real empathy, it is a pure survival mechanism. You know, brains do crazy things to survive crazy things. Why is the number 13 unlucky? Have you noticed that some airplanes don't have the 13th row? Some streets don't have the 13th number? Maybe it's the reason why we only have 12 mums and 12 gods of Olympus. The number 13 is considered unlucky. You know, some fear the number 13, but like they really fear the number 13. It's called, let me get my paper. That's not what it's called, but let me get my paper. It's called Triskaidekaphobia. But why exactly is it unlucky? Well, it's all because of one dinner, one supper, the last supper. Many, many years ago, there was a man named Jesus that you've probably heard about. And uh, Jesus just wanted to have a good time, you know? He wanted to have a party with the lads. And so he invited the lads, the apostles, and you know, they were having a great time drinking wine, eating bread. By the end of the night, they were fairly tipsy. Jesus stood up and was like, guys, 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 I love you all. Please, drink my blood and eat my body. You know how end of evenings can be. And this one guy, you know, there's always that one person at the party had to ruin it all. And he decided to betray Jesus. His name was Judah. Turns out, he was the 13th person at the table. And that is why the number 13 is unlucky. But let's dig a little deeper. Let me take my imaginary shovel. Why is Friday the 13th unlucky? Because it's not just the number 13. It is Friday the 13th. Tupac died on Friday the 13th. Coincidence? I think not. I think not. So why Friday? Well, because after Thursday, it's um, Friday, Friday. Ah, I miss that song. See, the last supper was on Thursday and after Thursday comes Friday. We get it. And uh, that is the day that Jesus was crucified on a Friday, which is why 
Friday the 13th is unlucky, all because of that one night with the lads. And of course, pop culture decided to emphasize this fear by creating Jan Forhis. So thanks for that, pop culture. Thank you. Why do we blow out candles on our birthday? This dates back to a long time ago um, in ancient Greece when the Greeks would worship Artemis. Artemis was the goddess of the hunt, wild animals and the moon. And when the Greeks would come to the temple to worship her on her birthday, they would bring a cake. But they wouldn't bring just any cake, they would bring um, a placenta cake. Seriously? They would bring a placenta cake? <gasps> Alright, no, 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 it's not a real placenta cake, it's just what it's called. So it's actually a honey cake made of honey, cheese and bay leaves and it was round so that it could represent the moon. Now, the Greeks would also add some candles to represent the moonlight. When they came into the temple, the Greeks would then make a wish or ask for something to the goddess and that is how the tradition went on that on your birthday you make a wish and you blow out candles on a placenta cake. Also, if you want to make a placenta cake, I uh, left uh, the link in the description. Why do pilots say, Roger that? In airplanes, pilots say, Roger that, once they receive a message. I used to see this in movies and I was always like, who the hell is Roger? You know, because if they were just receiving a message, they could say, I received your message. But instead, they talk about some mysterious guy called Roger. So I did my detective research, and I found out that this Roger guy doesn't even exist. You see, back in 1903, radio communication didn't exist, so people had to use hand signals and flares. I don't think it was very practical, though, because seeing this from an airplane must have been quite hard. So technology evolved, and then voice transmission was finally possible. Now, because not all pilots could speak English at the time, they needed an international way to communicate. So the International Telegraph Union decided that Roger would be much easier to pronounce than received. And that's why pilots say Roger that. Mind you, since the 50s is the NATO phonetic alphabet that's being used and Romeo replaced Roger. But pilots still use Roger. I guess that's all I have for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something and um, that you Rogered that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go. Bye.